Okay, here we go with another one I haven't played until this video, Kingdom Hearts Recoded. And for some reason I mistakenly remembered it as a puzzle game that was somehow canon to the franchise's story. Well, I got the puzzle part wrong to some degree, but it is indeed canon, it is indeed canon, and it wasn't originally a Nintendo DS game. Kingdom Hearts Recoded is in fact a remake of Kingdom Hearts Coded, a once Japanese exclusive mobile phone game that was released episodically starting in 2008 and ending in 2010. And it wasn't the first mobile Kingdom Hearts game either, to my surprise. Apparently there was another game called Kingdom Hearts V-Cast, released in 2004 that, ooh, yeah, it's definitely an early mobile phone game. Jesus, is this one canon too? No, I'm serious, is it actually fucking canon? Because I will sink into the goddamn darkness if it is. I'm gonna assume it's not and therefore not worth the time to hunt down. In early 2011, the folks at Square Enix decided to remake the game for the Nintendo DS, a good move considering that it probably wasn't a good idea to keep something that tied to the other games locked out to international audiences. Now, as far as this story goes, I, I honestly don't know why we needed a whole game to justify the minimum amount of story significance Recoded contains. While reflecting on his chronicled adventures throughout the first two games, Jiminy Cricket discovers a mysterious message written on the back end of his first journal, the one that said, Thank Nomine, which we're only now following up on. Their hurting will be mended when you return to end it. And this game is particularly clumsy with using the word hurt as a noun. Just to start with that real quick, there are still more hurts than you have just undone. What? Just use the word pain or torment. It rolls off the tongue better. This writing fills me with hurt. Jiminy consults King Mickey about the message and to get to the bottom of it promptly, Mickey has the journal digitized for further examination. Unfortunately, the book is rife with bugs and glitches, as someone wasn't careful with their porn browsing. Eh? But to rid the book of these problems, King Mickey creates a digital Sora to head inside the book and clean the mess, and maybe to get some clarity on the message. Spoiler warning, the meaning of the message doesn't become important again until the end of the game. So that little tidbit is just pushed away for the sake of cleaning all these nasty bugs. And that is the entirety of Recoded, really. Since Jiminy's first journal was originally a written chronicle of Sora's adventure in Kingdom Hearts 1, the worlds inside the book are ripped from that game with exception to Deep Jungle, Halloween Town, Atlantica, and Neverland. Those worlds are just gone, probably because uh, maybe Jiminy ran out of ink during those ventures? Either way, Recoded is a glorified retread of the first Kingdom Hearts game. The overarching plot is different, sure, and the individual plots inside each world are a bit changed, but it is roughly identical to the PlayStation 2 original, and I should stress, this has already been done before thematically with Chain of Memories, and they're doing that shit again, and near the end of the game, we get a callback to Chain of Memories, meaning we get a retread of a retread of a retread. What in the blue fuck? Listen, the only important part of Recoded is at the very end of the game, where the one responsible for the mysterious message was in fact a digital version of Nomine who was implanted into the journal around the time Jiminy wrote the thank Nomine line at the end of Chain of Memories. The purpose of the message? to relay to the real Sora at some point that the likes of Terra, Aqua, Ventus, Roxas, and Shion need to be released from their torment eventually, prompting Mickey to write that message Sora and the gang read to themselves at the end of Kingdom Hearts 2. Yep, that's essentially what the game amounts to, an explanation to what was behind that letter. They needed a whole game to do that. I suppose to be fair, something a little more interesting does occur during the secret ending, although it has nothing much to do with the plot beforehand, so that isn't giving the game much praise. With Xehanort's Heartless and Zemus completely vanquished, Master Yen Sid fears that Master Xehanort will soon gain back his original body and try to do something sneaky in due time. He instructs Mickey to bring Sora and Riku to his domain to begin their training for the Mark of Mastery exam. More on that when I get to Dream Drop Distance. Uh, recoded... <laughs> I don't know. This didn't need to be a thing at all story-wise. Until the end of the game, nothing matters, and even then, that itself is not so much a big deal. And when it comes to the fates of Terra, Ventus, and Aqua, that shit Mickey already knew, and I'm sure in time he would have asked Sora and Riku for assistance in rescuing them all. I'm not missing something here, am I? Recoded is both pointless and redundant. Big emphasis on redundant. If you've played either Kingdom Hearts 1 or Chain of Memories, you have literally seen all this before, and it's probably why, like 358 Days, it's only represented with cutscenes in the HD compilations. No gameplay to be found. But really, I'm surprised it did that much, given how little recoded means at the end of the day. At least 358 Days had a story to tell, and one I found perfectly okay. What what Recoded eventually asked of the story could have easily been fit at the end of Birth by Sleep. Certainly would have been more relevant, that's for sure. I won't lie though, when comparing these two games at least, I find Recoded to be the better game. 
When a couple of you guys mentioned your utter disdain for this title on my Twitter page, I think most of that ire was directed towards the game's plot, which is totally fair. Yeah, I, I get that. But the actual game, though, I mean, it's it's not amazing, but it's it's not too bad either. Still, let's not get our hopes up too high because bottom line, Recoda is one of the most unoriginal games in the series aesthetically and structurally. Destiny Islands, Traverse Town, Wonderland, the Olympus Coliseum, Agrabah, Hollow Bastion. You've been here before. It's visually tiresome and not much is done to stray from the traditional pathway. Your goal as this digital recreation of sort is to head inside these worlds and rid them of their numerous bugs and glitches. How's this done? Depends on the world most of the time. Mainly you're fighting Heartless as to be expected, using a battle system that's one part in a bridged version of Kingdom Hearts 1 and another part birthed by sleep with the return of the command deck system with a little less to experiment with on both ends. Not the best of both worlds I would say and certainly not as explosive. Sora doesn't even get any real buddies to tag along until near the end of the game and even then that's only for one world and the game lags like crazy when it happens. I thought co-op buddies would be more of a thing throughout the game since early on Mickey and the gang end up getting digitized into the journals themselves much to their shock. Majesty, there, on the monitor. Huh? What the hell am I looking at? When does this happen in the movie? Now. You're looking at now, sir. But even after that, Mickey and the others still amount to mission control for the most part, which is a little disappointing. Regardless, the gameplay still has a degree of variation that keeps it from getting too samey too quickly. Keyblades often bring different perks when performing combos and finishers. They're not as dramatic as command styles in Birth by Sleep, but they layer on the extra damage on top of what you already do. And hey, I'll give props to the level up system. Beats the shit out of the panel setup that plagued 358 days. If you ever played Final Fantasy X, rejoice. The stat matrix, the way you increase your stats and unlock new abilities and recode it, is almost exactly like the sphere grid system, where these different types of stat chips you can win in battles or treasure boxes, say like strength, health, or magic power, can be placed on this grid, simultaneously increasing your power and leading to a number of branching pathways that house new abilities to learn later down the road. You can even alter things like the game's difficulty, the rate of which enemies drop pickups, and the amount of loot they drop, at the cost of making things harder for yourself, like less experience or smaller health pools. An interesting trade off I find. Mechanically, I find Recoded quite intriguing, but that's as far as I'll go for legitimate praise because structurally, it's got a number of snags. Firstly, every world is riddled with these blocks that you can either destroy to clear up the pathway, or bounce on for some awkward platforming that isn't helped by the limited camera system, or maybe they can act as direct obstacles. Some even hit you on contact. Oh, I get it, it's a hitbox! Yeah, I see what you assholes did there. Anyway, the overabundance of these blocks does wonders in making these worlds all feel like one another. There's a couple of deviations, I'll get to those in a second, but this is what you're dealing with for a good chunk of the adventure, blocks. To remove a world of its bugs and glitches, Sora needs to enter the back door of that world when it begins acting up, which involves a pixel hunt that wears out its welcome fast, more so when you gotta do it multiple times in one world, and then you finally enter the digital world's keyhole to defeat the boss located inside and finish things off. The back door of a world is basically a gauntlet of Heartless, located in this digital space that all worlds share, and it doesn't get much better than this visually. It sort of reminds me of Space Paranoids from Kingdom Hearts 2, a world I enjoyed for its look and feel, but in no time these two will overstay their welcome because these aren't much different than what you're already doing on the outside, destroying Heartless. Now to make things slightly more interesting for yourself, you can wage your special points to complete these instances with certain stipulations, and if you manage to accomplish the objective, you get a shitload of points to spend on upgrades and the like, and that's fine, but it doesn't do much to make these feel any less filler. On the occasion, Recode it likes to throw an odd curveball. Traverse Town has a 2D side-scrolling section that isn't very interesting as far as platformers go. And Wonderland has a couple of stealth sections ripped right out of 358 Days, as well as these shoot-em-up sections that I found pretty cool being honest, but still come out of nowhere. And Olympus Coliseum pays tribute to Square's early days by having every battle inside set up as a classic RPG battle. Kind of makes the world drag, but I mean, some of these ideas are neat, but they're so oddly implemented and not very rich mechanically on their own. They're like little samplers of other games. I think it makes Recoded feel disjointed. Varied, yes, but disjointed, as if the developers are just throwing ideas into the mix based on what they hit on the developer dartboard. Still, it certainly didn't put me to sleep like 358 days. I think the battle system is more interesting, thanks in part to the command deck system returning from birth by sleep. Again, you can't do as much in that game, but I find this more engaging. Recoded is also not as long as 358 days. While that game took me close to 30 hours to complete on a normal pace, 
Recode it only took me over 13 hours. It helps that Recode didn't reuse every world from Kingdom Hearts 1, but let's face facts here. No amount of solid gameplay could hide the fact that Recode is just a retread. It doesn't add anything to the lore, clarifies one single thing at the end of the story, and is in no way close to matching the quality of the console games, or even Birth by Sleep. There's very little to do outside the main campaign, and the game gives you very little reason to go out and explore shit. Though a completely fine game, there's absolutely no harm in skipping it, so skip it. So I wanted to apologize for making you guys wait a bit for this video. Around this time of the year, my Let's Play channel, SGB, celebrates October with Halloween Fest, and that's been taking a bit of my time with how many videos Ellie and I have been producing since the start of October. I understand if you're a little peeved that there was a little gap between the last video and this video, and this video was not as big as the other ones. I understand. That. It's just... I try to balance things out when I can, but sometimes it doesn't work out that way. Well, I won't keep you guys any longer. We have one more game left to go for this marathon. Yeah, I know there's still Bat Cover and Union Cross, the other mobile phone game. Is it Union Cross? Unchained Key? I don't, I don't fuck them. Either way, I think it's best if I just wait until Kingdom Hearts 3 is close to release before I decide to go back to those. This marathon's gone on long enough. I'm sure a lot of you will agree. That said, last game for the marathon, Kingdom Hearts Dream Drop Distance. Gonna be looking at the HD compilation version, of course, so don't fall asleep just yet. We may have some potential bullshit up in the horizon. <sighs> Thank you all for watching. Have yourselves a fantastic night, and take care. Thank you.